This is it. But no sign of the professor. I hope he's here and that he doesn't mind us disturbing him. He is a senior necromancer. I, I don't... Oh! Guests were stuck for hours. Poor souls. Oh. Professor Emmerich Volkaren of the Mormon Watch. Hello, Professor. Uh, we've never met, well, in person, but I I I've been writing to you. Bellara, my dear girl, what a pleasure. Surely you didn't come all this way just to see me. Um, actually, we did. You see, we need a fade expert. <clears throat> I'm Rook. Charmed. I liked that bit with the flaming skull. It's nothing, really. Just an evocation of the flame of the last steps. That looks great. Thank you. You know, I'm never quite sure how these spells strike someone from outside Navarra. I'd be pleased to continue our conversation after I tend to some small business here. I know it's a lot, but I swear we've seen the blighted elven gods ourselves. It would explain recent Oniric disruptions. At the least. The implications of what Rooks witnessed are... Ah, thank you, Manfred. No one ever brings me tea after a slog through a haunted crypt. My assistant, Manfred. Always thoughtful. You spoke of danger to the Fade. The Elven Gods plan to tear it wide open to get to the Blight. And they've already messed with it. Demons, tears in reality. Our team needs a Fade expert. Many Watchers never depart Navarra, but with events so dire... I... I'd be delighted to assist. It has been many years since you left us. Well, yes, but elven gods, ancient magics... I couldn't bear miss this. Besides, I've spent my life exploring the Fade and speaking to spirits. If Rook needs an expert, none are better qualified than I. Only if your assistant's coming. Manfred? But of course! Welcome aboard. Wonderful! I'll gather my things. Come, Manfred! <laughs> the Grand Necropolis was at peace again, and Emmerich was off to a new adventure. But in Navarra, nothing stays down for long. The Venatori had unearthed something no one should have, and delivered it to the worst possible person. Emmerich's journey would soon bring him face to face with the gloaming lantern. <laughs> What the Venatori ultimately intended with their incursions into the Necropolis worries me. Whether or not it was directed by the gods, the timing serves them well. Chaos, I fear, is their ally. With this, Demeta's crossing and the Blighted Dragons, and everything else we're all dealing with, feels like we're at war. A lot of little wars. So instead of one giant fight, we have a lot of smaller ones. I bet that won't make things any easier. 
The gods have made bargains with the worst people in Thetis. Offered them all power. And it's not as though the Antom or Venatori will care about the price. So how do we fight back then? We don't have an army, but we do have allies. Like the Veil Jumpers. After Demetis crossing, it's personal for them. The Crows, particularly after we helped save their city. Thea and Viago know what is owed. They will make good on that debt. Also, Lady Morrigan requested a meeting at the Cobbled Swan in Minrathis. Could she have found some trace of the gods? Probably. Morrigan doesn't visit crowded taverns for fun. I also heard from Grey Wardens out in the Hosburg wetlands. Antoine and Evka. Something strange is happening with the Blight there. I bet it involves the gods. Any details on the Blight in the wetlands? Antoine said he didn't write it down. Why not? Either he didn't trust someone else wouldn't read the note, or he didn't want us to panic. The First Warden didn't seem impressed the last time we met. <laughs> I heard he told you to piss up a rope. Will he be in the wetlands? I don't keep track, but he can't stop you from asking a few questions, if we're fast enough. Gilanane has laid low since we hurt her dragon, but the blight spreads rot wherever the gods go. And no one's better at tracking blight than wardens. Morrigan and those wardens feel like our best leads on finding the gods. Are they really gods? Or just ancient mages? It's not clear. They're gods. Oh, the closest damn thing to them. Nev, you're back. Yeah, I am. A couple of new people have joined the team since you've been gone. This is Professor Emmerich Volkarin, he's our Fade expert, and Tosh, our dragon hunter. Hey. Charmed. Right, not everyone has met. So you're a dragon hunter? Mirathus could have used you. What's going on? Back home? What isn't? Look, you made an impossible call without enough information. I get it. It's the corner the gods put us in. It just... might take time to shake off. You are back though, right? Yeah, Val. I'm back. Good to have you back. Whatever the circumstances. Everyone needs to be part of this. That's the only way we'll win. After what happened to Minrathus, I've got even more reason to go after the gods. If anyone's got a shot at this, it's the people here. I'm still on the job. Count on it. Great. Let's follow up on some leads. I'll let Lady Morrigan know we're ready to meet. I'll send word to Antoine and Evka. They're holed up in a town called Lavendel. Everyone else should rest up. Be ready to move when I call. Never easy, is it, kid? What do you mean? Making the big choices, then living with the consequences. If I don't make the tough decisions, no one else will. So I live with the consequences. And you don't blame anyone else for them. That's why I recruited you. Anyway, you've got a meeting with Morrigan to attend, and dealing with whatever the Wardens found. All this chatting has taken it out of me. Think I'll rest for a bit. Good work, Rook. You'll find your way through this. I know it. A third edition of the Unnameable Elements? I didn't even know it had editions. Oh, it's much improved with the Index. Uh, please, borrow it if you'd like. I'd love to. Oh, Rook, you probably wanted to say hi. Thanks, Professor. You look moved in. Just a few essentials. Manfred was a great help with the boxes. <laughs> what a fascinating place this lighthouse is. What do you make of it? It's great. Big, mysterious, lots of art. Everyone's got their own room. It'd be easy to fall in love with such a place. 
I think Ballara has. She's been quite welcoming. However, I noticed a few of the others taken aback by Manfred, and I overheard remarks about my skulls. My necromancy won't cause any undue worry, will it? No way! Ugh. But a few people might not get it. Oh, I'd hope to make a good first impression. Polaris excited you're here. Everyone else just has to get to know you. <laughs> uh, please excuse me. Manfred and I should finish our inventory. Thank you for stopping by. It looks like our boy Asan is feeling his oats. Or whatever griffins feel. He's getting the hang of it. When he listens. He seems to be able to handle himself so far. You got lucky the Gloom Howler didn't tear you to pieces, boy. You wait for my command. We attack together. Then we can kill stuff like that. Well, at least he's learning. The instincts kick in. Griffin see Darkspawn and it's a fight to the death. Like wolves hunting deer. Just need to corral it. Sounds like the perfect soldier. And even flies. Aerial cavalry. A full-grown griffin is a force of nature. Every muscle in him, every talon, every feather, honed into a killing machine. Hassan's ancestors took on archdemons. Like his name says, he's an arrow. Half lion, half eagle, with the instincts of both, griffins will always be hunters. Just like his daddy, Daffrin. <laughs> I suppose we are our nature. Not sure about that? Most of my life I've hunted the darker things in the world. But caring for a griffin? What do I know about that? Yet here I am. That's not so bad, is it? Not the path I expected. Makes me wonder about a son, his brothers and sisters, still young, pure. You're worried? I'm responsible for the future of every griffin alive. I want it to be a good one. These animals live to fight, but I wonder if there's another path for them. I'd like to think everyone can find a new path. Even griffins. Just wish I knew what it was. Doesn't every good parent? Parents. A scary word. I'm supposed to be his bodyguard. What do you think you've been doing this whole time? Trying to ignore it. If I get myself killed by a herlock, that's on me. If it's a son, I just don't want to mess it up. I think that's where trust comes in. That Tulum idea you keep talking about? Trust Asan to find his way. Don't force things. He's headstrong. <laughs> Good thing you are too. <laughs> right. Thanks for the chat. Why do you run around in fancy mage clothes? Because I like them. You're barely even wearing a shirt. You fight Anton with a bare midriff. Everything all right? We're fine. Just trading fashion tips. So what I wear is a problem for you? It's not. It's just... Why dress like that? Are you trying to make your mother happy? Is this about what your mother said on the beach? No. What'd she say? Tasha's mother said that Tosh acted more like a man than a woman. And you feel like you should wear dresses to make her happy? <laughs> no. Can you imagine me in a dress? I'd look stupider than I... I'd look stupid. This isn't about the dress, is it? No, it's... I don't know. She always says stuff like that. About how I dress, how I act. And? 
It feels... right. When she says I act more like a man. It feels... right. Why does it feel right? Tosh, do you like being a woman? <laughs> Nobody likes being a woman. Ah. Uh. This is stupid. Forget I said anything. It's not stupid. I do like being a woman, but if you don't, maybe that's something to think about. But what does it mean? Uh, it could be about your mother's expectations, or about how it feels to be a woman and Kunari. Or maybe it's being a woman, period. How would knowing that help? It won't change anything. Some of my friends in Minrathas talk about not feeling comfortable in their own skin. As a man, as a woman. I could see if they'd like to talk. Maybe what they say fits how you're feeling. Yeah. Okay. And thanks. You do look really pretty. Oh? To look at, I'd smudge your makeup. Thanks for letting me down gently. I cannot say. Who created you? I cannot say. What can you say? I cannot say. Right. Deserve that. Got the Archive Spirit working, I see. Brooke, you're here. And I did, sort of. A little bit. It appears, but it won't tell me anything. You simply ask the wrong questions. A common affliction of the weak-minded. Also that, it's kind of mean. Just insult it right back. Assuming you know how to insult a spirit? I've never thought about it. H how would you do that? Emmerich might know. Hmm, that is an idea. Sirian learned a lot, taught me a lot about these archives. They have, well, not thoughts like us, but sort of pathways, I guess. They can only respond to specific questions worded in specific ways. So, if you're powerful, like almost God-level powerful, how would you talk to someone you see as lesser? I'd probably just tell them what to do. Right! Don't waste time on them, just get to the point! Let's try it! Archive, tell me who built you. One of the greatest of Elvenan, a steward of her glory. Truly, I was blessed to bathe in his warmth. Anaris built me, and to him I shall someday return. You mean, the Forgotten One? I cannot say. Good point. That was us. Anaris. I know I've heard that name before. Yeah, a forgotten one. Remember the nursery rhymes? Don't speak their names or they'll come for you. Unlike our so-called good gods, which, well, we saw what happened there. So who knows what they really were? The forgotten ones. They used to say Solus was one, so best case scenario, like him? Worst case, well, you heard it talk. Right. So this thing's dangerous if it belonged to one of them. Could be, but still important and invaluable. Everything Anaris knew, this thing knows, and my people deserve to know. If I can get it to tell me... Archive, tell me about the Dreadwolf. An ideologue and a fool who will soon pay the price. When Anaris dispatches the Evanuris, he will spare a thought for Fen Harel. Archive, tell me about the Evanuris. A group of cowards hiding behind their more powerful magic and superior numbers. Their jealousy of Anaris was palpable. Their war is unending, but Anaris will prevail. Have fun with the condescending spirit. I'll try. Could be worse, I guess. Worse 
Like the wound of betrayal Lord Anaris suffered, soon he will cast down the oppressors and take his rightful place. What a shame I can't stay longer. Good luck. Appreciate the support. Back, demon! No further! Isn't standing up to them supposed to work? Let Lucanus go! Don't make us hurt both of you! What's going on? Lucanus? It's not Lucanus, it's the demon! It's taking him over, he's trying to leave! <sighs> Smells like jam and brimstone. Rook, do something! Lucanus, wake up! Ugh, what the...? You tried to walk through the Alluvian in your sleep. Spite wanted out. <sighs> I need coffee. Are you sure you're all right? This could be better. It's hard for Spite to take control when I'm awake, so... I try to stay awake. You can't just stay awake forever. I think that would kill you. I'll be more careful next time. We have to make Spite understand that he's endangering you. He's Spite, not learning. He doesn't listen to anyone. Don't worry about it. This won't happen again. And thanks. Rook, welcome to the Hosberg Wetlands. I'd say make yourself comfortable. Hmm. This place is... Foreboding? Yes. Well, foreboding is normal here, but it's worse than usual. The Blight's always a problem in the Anderfels. It's not strange to find a corrupted patch of forest or swamp. What is strange is the sudden surge of Blight through the Hosberg wetlands. Much like the village you found, the Blight here struck too quickly, and in strange forms. It's choked the whole area, and the local village, Lavendel, was caught in it. But they're survivors. We can be grateful for that. It only gets worse from here. We've got the same feeling. As far as we can tell, the gods you're chasing weren't here directly. If the Blight's really changed, then the changes are widespread. As for how much... I... I can almost sense something in there. Another sound under the Blight's usual song. Stories say Warden sends Blight. I never thought it was literal. It happens when you join the Order. But that's more than I should say. When we met, you tried to block the sound out. Now you hear too much. If it helps, that's what we're here for. Become a Warden, hear the Blight. Kind of a bad trade. The Lords just throw a party. The Wardens throw parties. Sometimes. Sometimes they're even fun. <laughs> I'd like to see that. So, what's the plan? We heard rumors of the Surge here and volunteered to investigate. The First Warden expects a report. Soon. If we want proof the Blight's changed, then this place is where to find it. But the way the Blight left the village, we've had our hands full just keeping it back and helping the sick. You need more to study. Yes. The odd growths the Blight has formed, like boils, they surround Lavendel. I need more samples. So you two study the Blight? Formally? No. Well, maybe. It depends on your definition. We travel a lot, and tend to get sidetracked by weird problems. Who knew I'd roam so far for Morlaix? If we want to help, we need to learn what we're dealing with. 
Samples. That's gonna be... gross. That's probably the best word for it. I'll give you something to contain the blight. And watch for Darkspawn out there. Right. Darkspawn. Can't forget them. Good luck. Antoine? Antoine? Yes? Ah, uh, yes, the blight samples. They're like nothing we've seen, or anything in the Warden records. And I can... I almost hear voices in it. The gods calling the blight. I can't hear anything. But if you believe me... We knew things were bad. But if the blight's being called, the situation's more unpredictable than we thought. We need to... I give you two rain, and this is where it leads. Chasing Rook's lies. First Warden, I... Stay away from the Blight and the Wardens. How many times must you be told? Until you listen, I'll be here. Not helping. Rook knew something was wrong. I can hear it in the samples. The gods. She's telling the truth. The Blight has changed. And that changes everything. It changes nothing. Your sensitivity to Blight is useful, Warden Antoine. But you've had more than one snake in your ear. Why listen to the experts? You've clearly got this handled. That's enough from you. You tampered with a ritual that unleashed Blight. You did not know what you were doing then, and you don't now. If gods control the Blight, we need to change how we approach it. Archdemons control Blight, and we'd sense if one had risen. We'd make the sacrifices needed to fight it. But we... The Blight has increased. Now is not the time to lose focus. Wardens Evka and Antoine, are you sworn to combat the Blight? Yes, but... Then report back to Weishaupt and do so. That went poorly, even for a talk with him. What an asshole. A lot of people are going to die for his arrogance. Maybe. So much for convincing the Wardens. We can't give you the order, but you have us. We'll keep tracking the Darkspawn and the Blight. We'll do what we can. And if we learn the Gods' plans, you will too. The Elven God of Monsters had been hard at work. She'd taken the dark spawn and made them so much worse. Now, she and Elgernon had their glorious new army. The Risen Gods were ready. And they had just the target. Why did Morgan want to meet in Minrathis? Isn't she helping the Veil Jumpers in Arlathan? Indeed. But today we have a guest, and she needed the anonymity that only a city provides. Well, look who it is. Good to see you, Lace. Rook, you remember how Varric and I served the Inquisition? Well, this is Inquisitor Lavellin, the woman who led us all. Andaran Artishan. Anathera. I wish we could be meeting without our gods threatening to blight the world. A blight that spreads wider with each passing heartbeat. Morrigan and Harding have told me about what you've accomplished since taking over for Varric. You've put together an impressive team, and you've got the best chance, maybe the only chance, to stop Elganan and Gilanane. Sounds like I'm cleaning up your mess. Rock. No, Harding. This is my mess. The Inquisition sealed the breach and stopped Corypheus. We saved the world. 
We also left Southern Thedas vulnerable to Kunari invasion, as the Exalted Council showed. But the Inquisition didn't start the Mage Rebellion. We didn't start any of this. We did our best, but our best had consequences. When those consequences became apparent, I disbanded the Inquisition rather than let it turn into something someone else had to stop. Too many leaders claim credit while avoiding responsibility. I won't be one of them. So, Rook, I am asking you to help me clean up my mess. Okay. And while you do so, Rook, the Inquisitor will do her best to ensure that the rest of the world remains intact. A daunting prospect, given that most of the South is under siege by Darkspawn. It's that bad? If not for the Inquisitor, the South would have collapsed completely. She has not been idle while you assembled your team. If the South is in such turmoil, why come up here just to talk? And how did you get here so fast? Did you think you were the only one to unlock the secrets of the Illuvians? Morgan helped the Inquisition use the Illuvians to travel. While I lack the Dreadwolf's vir of us, I may still scurry between the walls of this world to be where I might do the most good. The Inquisitor asked to meet you, and I thought it might help you to meet her. I thought the gods were mostly active up here. It's really that bad in the south. Elganon and Gilanane have indeed restricted their activities to the north. But the forces they deployed to the south, the strange new Darkspawn, have spread fear and corruption greater than any blight in history. Darkspawn have cut through the center of Vorle. Valroyo and Halam Shiral are barely holding out. Ferelden would have fallen already, if not for help from Orzammar. With Denerim lost, the Ferelden's are holding the line at Redcliffe. The Free Marches have the worst of it. Acting Viscount Aveline Valen led the evacuation of Kirkwall. She's taking her people and what's left of her army to help Prince Vale keep Starkhaven. Maker, we didn't know. My ma... Don't worry. I called in a favor with the Divine. Your mother's safe with some old friends. Thank you. The Inquisition might be gone, but my name still carries some weight. I've used it to get people working together where they can. Again. The South is my problem, not yours, Rook. You stop the gods, and I'll make sure the rest of Thedas doesn't fall to the Blight. What I really need right now is information. If you have anyone who can help... I'm sorry. The only reliable sources of information I have up here are Morrigan, Dorian, and Harding. All of whom are already helping us. I understand. The Inquisitor did not come all this way to leave you with empty words, however. She brought something no one else could. A wolf statuette? We've found others like it in the crossroads. Where'd you find yours? I found it right around the time Solus's ritual failed, when he was pulled into the Fade. We've examined the magic, and it's tied to the Veil. To him. Somehow. Solus is ancient, and his magic is part of him in a way far beyond that of mortals. I suggest you take it to the crossroads and see if something in the lighthouse calls to it. Perhaps it will yield some insight into your new ally. Solus is trapped in the Fade. He's not my biggest concern at the moment. Solus is trapped in your dreams, and while he cannot match Elgin and Orgillanane in strength, he is far more cunning. He is the Dreadwolf. He led a rebellion that lasted centuries. How many times do you think the gods thought him trapped and helpless? Solus was... important to me. If this statuette helps you understand him, if it uncovers something that... Honestly, I don't know. I wish I did. But this feels like a part of him. And whatever he and I once were, I think, I, I hope, it might help you. We should go, Inquisitor. The armies in the south need you. Right. Harding, stay sharp. You're my eyes in the north. 
Always, Inquisitor. Rook, good luck. If I come across anything else that can help, you'll be the first to know. Thank you. Rook, just got word. First Warden's calling everyone back to Weishaupt. Everyone except me, seems like. Guess the First Warden didn't like me joining your team. Calling Wardens back from all over Thedas is a big step. Did he give any reason why? Not exactly, but I've heard rumors of a massive Darkspawn horde on the move. Even hearing there's an Archdemon with them. We need to warn the Wardens. Let them know what's coming. Agreed. Rook, if the gods have an Archdemon... Warden lore says Archdemons only show up during a blight. Doesn't say anything about elven gods. Seems like the rules have changed, and we're going in blind. We need to know what we're up against. I'll talk to Solas. See if he knows anything about any of this. Make sure the others are ready to move. How fares your battle? The gods are moving against Weishaupt and the Grey Wardens. We've heard rumors the Darkspawn are being led by an Archdemon. And you have questions? I need to know how Archdemons relate to the gods. Are they just like the Blighted Dragons, or are they something else? I also need to know how to deal with the gods if they show up at Weishaupt. I propose a bargain. I will answer your question, if you answer mine. What? How are the Grey Wardens? Do they understand the truth of the danger yet? We've been through this already. You agreed to help me. What did you think my help would look like, Rook? I need to know that you are prepared. No. The First Warden still refuses to listen. As I feared. I tried diplomacy, I tried being firm, nothing worked. When I asked why you should be trusted to lead the fight, you denied that you were even the leader. That sufficed for me. But the Grey Wardens believe in dedication and authority. They already see themselves as the perfect choice to fight the Darkspawn. You cannot defeat Elganan and Gilanane without the Wardens. What will you do to bring them to your side? I can't force the First Warden to listen. I have to let the Wardens try it their way. And how many Wardens will die before the First Warden realizes his mistake? I've done everything I can to reason with him. I once warned an elven village that Gilanane was coming and they were in danger. They would not listen. I had to watch as their bodies twisted, as their shrieks turned into the grunting of animals. Their eyes were the worst part. They were still aware. They knew what had been done to them. I gained little peace from knowing that I had tried to warn them. Is that what you hope for? No. I have to find a way to get through to them. Then what will you do? Whatever it takes. Easily said. But it will have to be enough for now. You have answered my question, and I owe you an answer in return. Yes. The old gods of Tevinter, the Archdemons. There never were Tevinter gods. The Archdemons, as you call them, were always merely the weapons of the Evanuris. All right. Let's hope we can find the gods before they find their weapons. Unfortunately, the Dragon Thrall's life force is bound to the Evanuris as both power and protection. You will not be able to kill or likely even harm one of the Evanuris until their Dragon Thrall is slain. What can you tell me about the Archdemons themselves? Each is different, shaped by the whims and ego of its master. Elganan is the Lord of Tyranny. He would have ruled alone had Mithor not forced him to share power. Those who are strong, 
he molds into dictators themselves with visions of godhood. Those who are weak, he crushes. His archdemon reflects him. It is huge to feed his ego, the epitome of dragonkind, bent to his will. Damn. Tell me what you really think of the guy. He is cruelty and arrogance personified. All of the Evanuris were flawed. But he made all of them worse. By contrast, Gilanane was a servant of Andrew, whose skill at making monsters earned her promotion to the Evanuris. She is brilliant, ambitious, and unconstrained by anything you would understand as morality. In a kinder world, you would never need to see what she has done to her archdemon. In this world, I only hope you kill it quickly. In any event, the Evanuris will not be vulnerable until their archdemons are dead. The old stories of the Tevinter gods have them whispering in the dreams of ancient magisters. How did they do that, if they were just tools of the elven gods? The archdemons were once high dragons. The Evanuris bound them as a source of power. When I imprisoned the gods, their dragons remained free. That was my mistake. How so? I never bound a dragon to myself, for I believed that to enslave another creature was immoral. As such, I did not understand the power that connection gave. I thought the prison I had made was perfect. But their dragons were the conduit through which they spoke to dreaming minds. It says a lot about these talks that kill an archdemon is the easy part. It will not be easy. But you are this world's only hope. I would not suggest this path if I did not believe you could succeed. Oh, the god of lies believes in me. Even with their dragons dead, the Evanuris are powerful and well protected. You will need to use my dagger, the one you recovered. It can pierce their enchantments and strike them down. All right. Kill the archdemons, then use the dagger to take down the gods. Even a single opportunity to strike the Evanuris down will be rare, fleeting, and costly. You will not have another chance to catch them unawares. When you strike, you must be fully prepared. <laughs> 